Pam Shriver won 133 titles and snapped up an Olympic gold medal during her illustrious tennis career. But when she retired in 1997, she put aside that racket until she found herself facing three pint-sized opponents she couldn't refuse, her kids. Joining us now is former tennis pro Pam Shriver and The Wall Street Journal's Jen Murphy. Thanks to you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jen. Hey, Pam. How are you doing? <laughs> So Pam, after your last match, you only picked up your racket now and again. Why is that? Well, after 19 years of professional tennis, um, I, I never gave up playing tennis from 1997 until I had my kids. Or, but I, it just wasn't a priority to schedule practices or hits. Um, so uh, I didn't play that much. Um, and it, life's really changed in the last few years as my kids have gotten old enough to enjoy the sport. And I find myself, once again, when I'm with them, playing every single day. So now that they're starting to get more into it, how tough was it for you to get back into the game? Does it just come naturally? Well, there's certain things that uh, you leave behind when you play professional tennis. Uh, for me, I'll, I'll never, my hands will never be as quick. My feet, not that I was a fast player, but your footwork, uh, you know, you don't train like a professional anymore. But the great thing about the sport of tennis is that you can enjoy playing tennis your whole life. My mom at age 80 still plays a couple times a week and I've gotten just great thrill out of seeing the fourth generation in my family, my kids, um, start to fall in love with the sport as well. Yeah, that's definitely the upside of the sport. And Jen, you talked to some professionals who kind of had some tips to help ease back into the process if you gave up you know, your athletic career for a while. What were some of those tips? How do you get back into it if you're a little creaky? Yeah, you know, I think the most important thing to remember after you've had some time off is you have to take it step by step. So if you used to be a collegiate athlete and then you go to Wall Street for four years, you can't just jump on whether it's the basketball court, the tennis court, the track, um, and be expecting to have the same capabilities you had when you were back in college. So, you know create goals that are attainable and most people say listen to your body and like Pam was saying you know it's not your career anymore to be playing this sport make it fun make sure it's fun but most importantly is like take it day by day and listen to your body yeah that's a really good point point. and Pam now that you're not training you know at the competitive level like you were before you find yourself doing more work you're traveling for ESPN you're in town for the US Open how do you stay fit when you're on the road well, I'll tell you what, you squeeze in workouts when you can. For instance, here during the U.S. Open for ESPN, I try and get up, even though we work till some nights after midnight, I try and leave about a half hour space in the morning before I come back out to the tennis center to go to the gym and do a little cardio, perhaps some weights, some core work, some stretching. Um, I, I, I find myself sitting more when I cover major tennis, either sitting courtside or sitting in the booth or even transportation going back and forth from the city out to the National Tennis Center. So there's certain parts of my body that just don't feel as good as when I'm my regular active self with my kids when I'm back home in LA. So to be honest, I gotta keep things warm, uh, I gotta keep things uh, loose, and just hope to goodness gracious that I don't get asked to go cover a match on like that's about 400 yards away and I pull a hamstring running there. You really have to be aware uh, and go into things um, smartly. And Jen, you have your own crazy schedule. You're chasing down all these athletes. You're talking to them about their workouts. How do you stay fit? What are your tips? Yeah. You know, I think like what Pam said, when I'm in New York, I have a routine. I have this group of guys who I have this commitment to, and we run at the ungodly hour of 5.15 in the morning in Central Park. That sounds awful. Um, <laughs> but they make me laugh, which is great. And when I'm on the road, I mean, you have to embrace the fact that routine is not always an option. So any window of time, you know, I'm obsessed with finding great restaurants when I travel, but then I'm equally as obsessed with finding a yoga class or a running route or some type of activity I can squeeze into my day. So I think it's all about just carving out, like even like Pam said, 30 minutes of time when you're on the road. Yeah, that's a really good point. All right, thanks to both you ladies for joining us.